So we caught up with Senator Waters just before question time. Well, Larissa Waters, welcome back to politics and to our studio here after a period of time, more than a year on the sidelines. What did you learn from your absence from politics? Well, it's nice to be back with you, Greg. Oh, look, I think what was really brought home to me in the time that I had out of Parliament a good 14 months was how much people feel like the system is not really working for them. They feel completely disenchanted and disengaged with politics. Your average person on the street just thinks that it's not even about them or their lives and that their representatives, who are meant to be their representatives, are actually taking decisions that favour vested interests and corporate donors to and the that, political parties, not ordinary citizens. And that permeates all political mm. parties, that view. It seems to spread across the divide. What do you say to them? What do you offer to them to try and rectify that view? Well, look, I think people are desperate for their democracy back and they deserve that. So I think we need to get rid of the influence of vested interests and big money from our politics. They've got a pernicious influence. It's effectively you make a donation, you get the policy outcome that you want. And we've seen that time and time again. So is it any wonder that people feel disenfranchised and left out of the system? We need to clean that up. Let's end those donations from vested interests, from property developers, miners, to tobacco, gambling, alcohol, and let's let people feel like actually their representatives are there to speak for them and to represent their views. Uh, it's one small change we could easily make. The big parties have resisted that. We've been suggesting that for several years now, but I'm hopeful that we'll see some movement as they realise the deep disenchantment of the public. And what would happen on this agenda? So you take out the corporate donations. Mm. What, if anything, replaces it? Would you move to higher public funding of parties as per the votes they yield? Look, I think that's a conversation we can have down the track um, and that's something that, that our party supports. But I think the most important issue at the moment is to let our democracy work as it's meant to by getting out the influence of that dirty big money. But if you took that out, wouldn't that, couldn't that possibly weaken the party system as we know it in Australia? Or, or is that the objective that you're seeking? No, I think at the moment you have an unfair access and unfair, unfair influence by those big corporates. If you remove the fact that they can buy access and buy the outcomes that they want, I'm hopeful that you'll see better decisions that are driven by what's good for the community, what's good for the nation, what's good for the future. So this integrity agenda that you're running on now, does that also include anti-corruption, mm. watchdogs? Uh, what else so, are you building into this new portfolio of responsibility that you have for the Greens? Yeah, so I'm thrilled to to be taking on the democracy portfolio and cleaning up politics and ending that corruption is one of the key things that I've always been passionate about and now I get to be our national spokesperson on it. Um, but certainly a national anti-corruption body is much needed. People know we don't have one. They know we have them at the state level and they've been very busy. There's a lot of dodgy conduct that's been exposed by those various ICACs and, and C commissions. We don't have anything federally and both of the big parties have resisted that for so many years now. We Greens have been trying to introduce a national national anti-corruption body since 2010 um, and we've got nowhere but we don't give up and I think there's been a sense that it's inevitable and that the public deserve to know that their federal politicians are held to account. The current polls, if they were to remain the position of the parties relatively through to the next election, would suggest that a shortened Labor government is likely to be formed, particularly after uh, what happened with the Liberal leadership here mm. a fortnight ago. Do you see a meeting of minds, as per the Julia Gillard era, where there was almost an informal coalition in the Senate, certainly much common ground between Greens and Labor, do you look forward to that sort of relationship with a shortened Labor government? Well, what I'm looking forward to is the back of this nasty Liberal government that have shown themselves to be utterly bereft when it comes to standing up for people who need help, like people who don't have any homes, people who are incarcerated in those offshore prisons who've done nothing wrong. I look forward to getting rid of that self-interest and that nastiness and that ego-driven um, obsession that they've clearly got. Um, and what I'm hopeful for is a strong Greens role in the Senate so that we can hold Labor to account. It looks like, as you say, Labor is headed for government um, and we will work with them, but I really want to make sure that they follow through on their commitments. They often talk a big game and don't always follow through, but they also need to be pushed to go further on things like climate so we have a decent policy that brings people's power prices down, but actually protects us from the extreme weather damage that climate change is bringing down upon us. And of course, tackling that awful offshore detention where we are in 
inflicting cruelty and torture on people who have done nothing wrong. Because a lot of people look at the hodgepodge that is the Senate crossbench and the instability that comes with that for government now and they don't seem attracted to that sort of bartering and horse trading that goes on. Would a, under a shortened Labor government, would there be any advantage to some sort of pact, some sort of formalised agreement about, if not every piece of legislation, then some core principles between the Greens and Labor in the Senate? Well, look, I think people know what the Greens' core principles are. We want a better outcome for people and we want a better outcome for the planet. Um, and we put our policies on our website no matter what time of the election cycle it is. So people know what we stand for. Um, I'm not sure whether or not the sure. Labor would be interested in a formal coalition. We would certainly need to think long and hard about that because our policies are much stronger and much better for people and the planet than Labor's. Um, but we will work together to get good outcomes for people and the planet. That's what we're meant to be doing here in Parliament. We're not meant to be just insulting each other and, yep. um, and you know, doing ego boosts. We're meant to be here for outcomes and that's what the Greens would like to achieve wherever we possibly can. Now just as one who looks over the state of Queensland, much has been made of the Longman by-election and how much of a portent that was mm. for the next federal election. What was your take out? What is the relative standing of the LNP mm. and or Labor in your state at the moment? Well, look, the big parties are very much on the nose and you see that from the fact that the their vote is at historic lows, both of their parties, and the vote for independents and smaller parties, including the Greens, is at record highs. So there's clearly a disenchantment there with the old parties because I think it harkens back, Greg, to the fact that people don't feel represented anymore. They don't feel heard by the big parties. They know the big parties take money from those big corporate donors and they can see that that's where the priorities of the big parties lie. They, they can also see that the Greens don't take that dirty money uh, and that we're th they're genuinely to represent the community and the planet. So yep. I'm hopeful that our support will continue to grow and we can be that voice for the community in Parliament. Well, there is something at large there. We're picking it up in state by-elections as well. Mm. Uh, what's your tip? How much longer do you think it will be until Australians go to the polls for a federal election? Well, I think when the government's so deeply unpopular as the polls would suggest, they won't be rushing off anytime soon to their own slaughter. And I imagine that Mr Morrison, who seems like a person who's fairly self-confident, I think he'll probably enjoy the uh, kudos that goes with, with running the nation, not to cast any aspersions, but I think he looks like he's having quite a nice time there. So I imagine he'll enjoy that as long as possible. Yeah, let's keep an eye on his decision-making probably next year. Larissa Waters, thanks for your time. It's lovely to be here. Thanks, Greg.